Hi, this is Chantelle Girardi, Facebook strategist. And I'm here today on behalf of Hear Yourself Expos to help wellnesspreneurs um, effectively communicate their business so in order to generate more clients. Uh, basically, it becomes a game of who is doing Facebook better because whoever does it better are the ones that are going to get the clients. So hopefully today, I'm going to be able to shed some light on you on how you can effectively communicate what it is that you do on Facebook so that... Um, that you start to attract the right clients and you start to generate a little bit more interest in your business and so that people choose you over um, other other uh, other people. So I am hiding out of my car today. I was able to pull over at a, um, at a rest station to do this live, so I'm not driving. <laughs> and um, just to take the time. So firstly, just to thank Kelly Kingston uh, for giving me the opportunity today to support the Hear Yourself uh, Wellnesspreneurs and um, just share a little bit light on what they can do on Facebook to get a better result. So um, I myself have 20 years experience in the health, wellness and fitness industry. So I'm incredibly uh, passionate about the industry um, and it can be tough. It can be seriously tough for the health, wellness and fitness practitioners. Um, there's so many different modalities out there now and there's so many people, so many amazing qualified people out there. So it's very, very important that uh, in order to get the, to actually generate clients, to get clients, uh, the thing to do would be to um, effectively communicate. So that's why today I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, and I've been thinking about it all of last night um, after we were at the Toowoomba Expo uh, and um, at the Hear Yourself Expo, the Small Business Expo in Toowoomba. So that's where I'm busy driving back from at the moment. So with no further ado, um, I'm going to get on with it and I'm going to share some tips today. So number one is um, it's so important that you share your story. You know, how did you get into what it is that you are doing? Uh, I, I bet you didn't just fall into that space, you know, did you go through some sort of traumatic experience or like what was that journey, what was that aha moment or that defining moment that got you to where you are right now, you know, what was that process, how did you feel before that all started um, and, and how do you feel now, so people want to hear on your Facebook page, they want to hear about your story, they want to hear about your journey because it gives them credibility and also helps them to know, like and trust you. So. Take some time today and promise me you're going to do this. Get out a pen and paper and just sit quietly and think about that story. How did you get to that, that place? Um, for myself with Facebook, you know, um, out of pure necessity, I had to teach myself Facebook to save my business. Um, and that's how I got into it. And I tell that story now, but it also helps me connect with my ideal client. Um, and you telling your story will help you connect with your client. Sometimes we forget the process that we took. We just, we, we forget how we felt right at the very beginning when we started. Um, but it's important to, to really take some time to focus on how you felt at those moments because when you use those keywords, that is actually going to connect with your ideal client. They're going to go, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Yes, I agree. That's you 100% right. That's how I'm feeling. Yep, you get me. Um, so I need to, I, I, I'm going to choose you over somebody else. So think about your story. Sit down and write it. You know, a lot of people, they call it their bio. A bio can be a little bit more formal. Um, I'm more, uh, more likely to just just write just a genuine it doesn't have to be long script because social media is, is social so it's short script but just talk about um, some of the emotions that you were going through on your on your journey of where you are right now and talk about that talk about your business backstory talk about how you um, ended up getting your qualifications uh, what you did before you uh, became a practitioner um, and yeah, and, and use emotions. So emotionally, you know, tell them how you felt because people are, it's like reality TV and people actually want to hear, um, they want to hear you being genuine, authentic and honest um, and being open about it as well and help them to connect with you over someone else. It is actually the stories, your story that will help people connect with you over and above anyone else. So be sure to write your story. Um, and then on your Facebook page, there is actually a place if you, on your desktop, scroll down on the right hand side, it's called uh, your story. Make sure that you go and you put that story in there as well. You can also pin that story to the top of your Facebook page or your Facebook group so that when people go in there, straight away they can read your story and they already know who they're talking to. They already know uh, who they're in front of and they really start to form that, that trust with you. Uh, you can also put it on your personal profile. So if you go into your personal profile, you go into your about section, um, and it's called about you, details about you, and you can fill that in there now. 
I can guarantee you that most of you that are watching this today, I actually uh, have not filled out your about story on your Facebook page or on your personal profile. And we need to realize that when people are looking to work with someone, they go and they stalk. They go and stalk and they have a look and they go and look at your story and they go and look at your journey. Um, so it's important that you really, really um, take a bit of time out and you go and you do that properly. So that's number one. Um, so I'd be sure to include your why uh, and also your passion as well, what you're passionate about. So uh, people also connect with people due to values. So whatever your values are, they'll connect with people with the same values. So um, don't try just throw all the values in there. Just be genuine and authentic. Put your values in there and like always attracts like. But this is how you end up attracting the right clients that you're going to be happy to work with and the ones that are going to get the most results as well. Um, so number two is, um, so you've got to know who you're talking to. You have to consider who is your ideal client. And we have to remember that not everyone is your ideal client. And your ideal client is... Uh, must have money to pay you okay it's not a freebie it's an energy thing energy it's an energy exchange so if you're giving them energy you're giving them time you are taking them to a new level um, within their wellness or within their health you deserve to be paid for that that's your contribution to the world but we all deserve to actually be paid for that so you need to consider who's your ideal client and we need to know them intimately what are their likes what are their dislikes what are they interested in um, and this is so that we can provide content on our Facebook page that's going to connect with them. So if you like dogs, um, if you like AFL, um, it's going to help them connect with you a little bit further on a deeper level because you share similar interests. So be sure to include um, all the things, of course, that you like as well. But think about your ideal client because we have to pay attention to them. Uh, if you do, it's, it's like a partner. If you don't pay attention to your partner, uh, they're going to move on. They're going to go looking elsewhere. So you want to make sure that you are paying attention to what it is that they like. Um, you want to make sure that whatever they're interested in, whatever their problems are, whatever they're thinking or feeling, we want to provide content on our Facebook page that shows that we care about them, that we're actually interested in knowing, liking and trusting them back. So it is a, a mutually beneficial sort of relationship. So, so number two is that. Um, uh, we also want to connect with their pain. So if you're, if we know who your ideal client is and we know what their pain is, so if their pain is spending more time with their family, um, then you want to provide content about how to create more time or how to better manage your time so that you can spend time with your family. Um, if one of their pain points is um, stress and anxiety, then you want to provide content that is going to uh, support them through uh, you know, any stress or anxiety that they may be feeling. So, um, yeah, so make sure that you are providing content and that you actually take the time to consider who exactly is your ideal client, what are they interested in, so that we can provide content around that as well. So not only will they know, like, and trust you, um, but they'll also see that you are trying to know, like, and trust them. So it's a mutu mutually beneficial relationship. Um, and number three is you have to consider who your competitors are. So this is such an untapped thing that people don't do. They do not go stalk other industry leaders um, in their same fields um, on Facebook. So um, it is important you go onto Facebook, go and have a look at who your competitors are, who is providing similar services to you, have a look at their Facebook page, look at their branding, uh, look at their key messages, so the co consistent key messages that are coming through. Uh, have a look and see, you know, have people left them reviews? What type of reviews are they getting? What are people saying about them all the time? What type of services are they offering? And most certainly look at their price points as well. It's incredibly important for you to know, um, especially if you're location-based, you need to know what everyone else is charging. Now, this is not so that you can go in and um, undercut them, or and it's not so that you can go in and you sort of you can make fun of them on social media. It's um, you will find this incredibly powerful as a business owner. It will give you the confidence in what your point of difference is how you stand out from your competitors and then whatever those key points are that is what you bring to the forefront so if you know that somebody is um, a, a healer and they are healing uh, children you know energetically and they're healing children and say they are using uh, crystals but you are using oils then you want to bring that to the forefront the whole time or you're using crystals and oils, then you don't say, oh, well, they're using this and I'm using this, but instead you go in there and you make it known that what you're offering is, is over and above. And this is why we do this competitors analysis, especially as I said, if it's location-based. But you do have to know what other people are doing out there 
because we also have to be able to handle objections. So if somebody makes an inquiry with you and says, I'm interested in working with you, but they charging this, why are you charging that? You need to know that they potentially may say that and you need to be able to handle that objection straight away. And then if you know your point of difference, you can say, well, the reason I'm charging extra is because I actually have 20 years experience, whereas a lot of people only have two years experience. Um, and on top of it, I do oils and crystals as opposed to other people who just potentially use crystals. And this is why I use both of them. So it is important that you know price points and it's not important that you know what your point of difference is. One of the other things you're looking for when you are doing a competitor's analysis um, is you're also looking for a unique selling point. So what is it that you are doing that is different to everybody else? And as I said, you need to bring that to the forefront. And part of that unique selling point is you. You are your unique selling point. So it is important on social media, on Facebook, you need to often be going in there and you need to be letting people into your heart and you need to be a little bit uh, transparent with them, genuine with them, and you just need to engage with them personally as well so that they can remember that you are also the person behind it, especially if you're a practitioner who works directly with the people. Because if you're going to trust somebody to work on your dog, to work on your children, or even to work on you, they're going to want to have some contact with you as well. So you want to make sure that you are present in your social media too. Um, so that was number three, which is the competitor's analysis. So I encourage you today to go and stalk three people online, go on a Facebook, go and stalk three people online, take note of all the things that you do over and above your competitors, take note of their price points and their services, and note what it is that you do differently and better, and uh, make sure that you start creating content about that, about your point of difference. All right. Um, so number four is um, that desirable offer. So everyone should have one desirable offer. Now desirable offer needs to be desirable from your ideal client. So it's not what you think people would benefit from. We get all excited and stuck in our head and we know exactly what people need in order to get a, a result. But some people may not be there just yet. So we have to think about our ideal clients or the clients that come to us that you really, really love and think about you know, what is it that they love about you? When they came to you, how were they feeling? How did you get them through the door? And what was the, um, what, how did you get a yes from those people? So, you know, what program was it that you offered? What were the keywords that you were using? So those people went, yes, I want to work with you. So create a program around that. So if you've got people coming to you all the time and they constantly, constantly uh, say back pain, and they're coming to you and you go, this one comes to me for, and says my back sore, my back sore, my back sore. Then start creating content about back pain and then create a desirable offer which is going to handle that, that, that pain point. It's going to handle that problem. So you can say, okay, um, is that light gone a bit funny there? Yeah. Um, so that you can start creating a desirable offer around that. Um, you don't want to go in there and go start creating a program around headaches when somebody is one is uh, people are coming to you the whole entire time about back pain. You want to make sure that your desirable offer is handling the problem and the pain that your ideal client is wanting because that's how we get them through the door. So everyone should focus on having one desirable offer. Um, if we have too many services and we overwhelm people with our services, that is how we lose them. So what's important to do is to just le let people know what it is the problem that you solve and then to qualify them. So when they, they reach out to you and they inquire, uh, you qualify them, ask them questions, listen to what it is that they're struggling with and what they're hoping to achieve by using your services. And then from there saying to them, okay, we will, um, well, I've got this program for you. This program will be great. So rather than giving them an entire list of all your prices and all your services so they get overwhelmed, listen to what it is that they want. Think about the desirable offer that's going to get the outcome that they're looking for and then present that to them. Um, okay, so what's my next one? So my next one is um, sharing success stories. So you want to make sure on your on your Facebook as well that you want to share success stories. So people want to see the results that you've gotten from your clients. Now this is pretty easy to do because if you're working in your business every single day, well every single day just share on your page a success story. So this person came to me, they had stress, they had anxiety, they had a headache, um, they were really, really struggling, it was affecting their work, it was affecting the relationships. We've done three treatments now, it's taken three treatments, we've used this method and now this person's got a result, I'm so happy. Um, so sharing success stories is an incredible part of um, building trust and credibility on your Facebook page. 
Uh, another way to do that is to repurpose your testimonials. So get people to leave reviews on your Facebook page and you can repurpose them. So copy paste them back into your page or do them up in nice little images and graphics, post them on your page and let people show people what other people are saying about you as well. Uh, the next one is engaging your audience. So, you know, it's not just me, 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 me. We want to show the audience that we're interested in them. We identify with their pain points. We know what they're struggling with and provide content around that. And, um, and we want to engage them, meaning that we want to ask them questions. You know, how are you feeling? What program would you prefer? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a blog next week. Would you like me to create content around back pain or headaches? Um, and there is even a poll feature on your Facebook page. So it allows you to poll between two things. Um, so if you do it on a desktop and you've got a post, there's a poll option. You can say, I'm providing content next week. Would you like it on back pain or would you like it on, um, on, on headaches? Um, and then remember, don't just leave it there. Go back in and when people are engaging and they're responding and they're reacting, it's important that you go back in there and you follow up on the conversation. Okay, it's exactly like having a conversation with somebody. You don't want to provide content, then just leave it and then go back to them. It is important that you go in and you respond. Uh, the next one is, is that you've got to offer them an opportunity to work with you. So if we're providing the value and we're providing value and we're providing value the entire time and we're giving them all this content and you're playing games constantly, like, you know, little word search games and, you know, funny little memes. And if we're just playing the entire time on Facebook, but if we never actually giving them an opportunity or inviting them to actually have a phone call with us or to inquire further or to private message you. If you don't tell them to do that, if you don't use call to actions in your Facebook, um, then people will just keep looking and they'll just keep taking from you. Um, believe it or not, they actually people actually enjoy a, a one-step simple method of being able to use your services. As soon as it's too difficult, they'll go, I'll do it later, I'll fill that in later and later never comes. So it is important that the that in your content, you are also saying to them, I'm here, just if you need to chat to me, book a call, phone me, uh, email me, um, you know, reach out, reach out if you'd like to know more about my services or, and also feature your services um, in your social media as well. So we don't want to constantly be selling the entire time and we don't want the post to, to sound salesy, but it is important um, to include some of your services as well. And it's nicer to include services in a softer way, like for example, when I mentioned about sharing success stories, saying, oh, we've done it through three steps, uh, we're about to do, uh, we've got five steps in, in total, um, and in my experience, after five steps, generally the headaches will stop. Um, if anyone's interested in the service, let me know. So just letting people know that you are taking on more work, that you are um, happy to answer more questions. Um, and and get them off Facebook. Get them off Facebook as quickly as possible because the longer you keep them on Facebook with the back and forward and having conversations, the less likely they are to actually work with you. Um, and not only that, but it's incredibly hard then to follow up on those people as well. So when they are hot, so that they are actually reaching out and they're asking those questions, that's when they're a hot lead. And the longer you keep them on Facebook, the colder the lead they become. So it's important that you get them off straight away. Get them into that phone call, um, you know, or email them, but straight away get them off Facebook so that you can continue that conversation and try and get them into a program as soon as possible. So um, if you do have any other questions with regards to anything that I have mentioned today, as I said, today was about effectively communicating what it is that you do. And the reason I chose this, that today was because it, when you meet someone in person and you say, what do you do? You have the opportunity, you've got body language, you've got eye contact, you can kind of get a feel even when they are, you know, verbally telling you what it is that they do. You can get a feeling for what, for what it is that they are saying or doing, or you can ask questions. But on social media, it's so much harder because you're writing it in, you're writing it in and people may not understand it and they read it and they go, oh, I don't quite get that. And you don't even know that they don't quite get that. So um, we want to make sure that that we are asking people, you know, do you understand what this means? Like if I write this down, that this is what I do, does that make sense to you? Does that actually equal what you think it is that I do? Or are people just presuming it? Or are they confused? Because if they are, they won't engage and they actually won't tell you. But you've also lost them as a client, which is a little bit upsetting. So you want to make sure that you are constantly looking at your content and going, is this effectively communicating what I do to my ideal client? 
and not in a fluffy way, not in a cryptic way, but it makes sense straight away what it is that I do and how I can solve that person's problem. Um, so as I said, if you've got any questions, please write them in the box below. Um, and I do encourage you to do actually go through all those steps today, get out a notepad, uh, go and get follow through all those steps today. I think we had seven, seven steps today and go through the seven steps of what we did um, and go through each of those processes and you will notice an unbelievable difference in your results on Facebook. I can almost guarantee it. So uh, if you are stuck, let me know, write comments in the box below. If you do have a pitch, um, a pitch is a way, is a simple sentence or two where you um, communicate to somebody what it is that you do. Um, then you know, share your pitch in the comments below. Um, and if you're not quite brave yet to do that and you'd love some feedback, then private message me, Chantel Girardi, um, and I'll happily look at your pitch for you and I'll try and simplify it. Um, my pitch, and I use it everywhere I go um, so that it becomes sort of known, is um, I empower business owners with the simplest skills and strategy to successfully manage their own Facebook uh, profile to get a result. Um, so that's one sentence, I can write it and it 100% says what it is that I do and straight away my ideal client will go, yes, that's me, I want to get results on Facebook so I want to use you. And it will evoke curiosity and get them to inquire a bit further. So if anyone does just have a little sentence, a little pitch, a little story, a little anything and you'd like to test it or try it out on me, please private message me over the course of the weekend, I'll happy, happily look at it for you. So. Um, that's my 20 minutes. I thought I was going to be a bit short today because I'm hiding out here in the servo. So <laughs> it was too hot to stand outside. So I'm in the car with the aircon. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the Hear Yourself presenters today. Uh, thank you again to Kelly Kingston for the opportunity today to add value to the health, wellness and fitness industry leaders um, so that you can help more people. Uh, have an amazing weekend, guys. And I look forward to some of you reaching out and sharing with me your pictures. Have an amazing day, guys. Bye.